is Tim Sasserchi, and the second Genius webinar is going to be about, again, the R2100, but this time we're going to the Compact Logics PLC using Class 1 messaging uh, rather than uh, to the MicroLogix. So let's get started. It's just a brief in introduction about what we're going to talk about today. Um, number one primary is uh, seeing how the Device Master can easily connect to the Compact Logix PLC from Alan Bradley. And number two, having the 2100 just kind of demonstrate what the data looks like and uh, how to see it. Uh, thirdly, Port Vision's discovery tool, using that to configure the device master. And fourth, we want to take a look at the program. And what does it take in the PLC to program the uh, device master to talk to the R2100? All right, the device master selection process really is the first thing you want to look at. And we actually sell multiple versions. We sell a device master with terminals. We sell a device master with a DB9. We sell also a four port device master unit. Additionally, you can buy them with different protocols. So for example, Ethernet IP or Profinet or Modbus TCP. Because the R2100 has a serial cable that you can purchase and it's got a DB9 connector on it, I opted for the DB9 version, and I also am going to use a one port one so you can see it selected here. Secondly, the Device Master uses Port Vision for configuration. It's a super easy tool that we're going to show you here in a, in a minute, and uh, that's going to be used to set the IP address. And then, of course, configuration of the device is done using the web interface. So you just set your network settings, put the IP address into the web browser, and you'll connect to it. The R2100 is a true time-of-flight scanner used in many applications including navigation, collision avoidance. It has 11 beams, each with an 8 degree separation, giving you a total coverage of 88 degrees. Max distance, 4 to 8 meters depending on the size and the type of target that you have in front of you. There are a few components that you want to consider purchasing when you do this. First, of course, is the R2100 itself. This is demonstrating the RS-232 connectivity, so of course get the R2 version. And then you want the RS-232 cable. This is going to make the plug-and-play from the R2100 directly to the Device Master very simple. M12 on one side, DB9 on the other. And then, of course, you got the power cable, M12, and then flying leads. You can get many colors and connector options as well for this. All right, the PLC, the PC, and the Device Master will all be connected together on Ethernet using one of our Ethernet switches. We have unmanaged and managed versions, and you can see the picture here. I've got two. I'm actually using in this demonstration the five-port unit, and uh, we also have standard and extended temperature models. One of the last components is, of course, the PLC. We're going to use the Compact Logix L24ER. You can see in the picture here from Alan Bradley. It's going to use a USB port to program up and download. You can, of course, also program via Ethernet. Uh, we're going to use Class 1 messaging or implicit messaging, often referred to. It's basically when you have the Ethernet device in the uh, Ethernet tree in the PLC. And um, I'm going to use version 24 of the Studio 5000 software. Now let's look at how everything connects together. First you're going to power everything up with the 24 volts. This includes Device Master Switch, R2100 and PLC. Now you're going to connect the R2100 to the Device Master using the cable that we talked about before. It's got the DB9 on one side and the V1 slash M12 on the other. And then connect all devices using the Ethernet port and the Ethernet switch. The only reason I connect the PC to it is because I want to be able to use my uh, Port Vision software to configure the Ethernet settings of the Device Master. Last thing is a USB cable for the PLC for the programming. All right, the Ethernet network configuration for the Device Master is using a program called Port Vision DX. Super simple. I would make sure that the PC is already set up and ready to go. For example, 192.168.1.34. My PLC is set to .50, and I want my device master to be .249.
It doesn't matter what the IP address currently is for Device Master, we can change it and see it. So, install the software, hit scan. On the bottom, you'll find the device will appear. It's got a little green check mark by it. It will end in, for example, in this case, device.67. You'll double click on it. You're going to put in your IP address, subnet mask, and gateway, and then apply changes. The Ethernet settings will automatically be changed. And you'll be ready to go for your configuration of your device. The actual configuration of the device master is going to be done using a web interface, and we're going to talk about that shortly. The R2100 has a very simple RS232 serial protocol. You send five bytes in a command, and you get 50 bytes response. If you don't send a command, the R2100 will do nothing and will send you no information. You could set a max, let's say, pull rate of 20 milliseconds, but we don't suggest this. The beams won't update that fast anyway. Internally, we suggest no faster than 50 milliseconds. Baud rate is fixed. You cannot change it. 115, 200, 8, none, 1. And then also you can see the command here. So the 5 byte command I've got here labeled in hex by byte. DE 01055583. And then the 50 byte response. It's got a little header on it, so 4 byte header, which is that 01DE 3211, and then here comes the beam information. You're going to get the 2 bytes, which is the 1 integer uh, distance information. I have labeled here D0, and you get the 2 bytes, which is the strength of the beam information, which I have labeled here E0, and then it just repeats. So beam 0, beam 1, beam 2, beam 3, all the way through beam 11. Just that simple. Okay, the configuration of the device master uh, on the serial side, on the Ethernet IP side, is simply done using a web interface. Just make sure your PC is still in the same subnet and you're connected to the device master via Ethernet. So you can see I just put the IP address into the web browser bar and then out pops, let's say, the configuration for the device master. What I'm doing here is configuring the first serial port. Okay, so I've, I've configured the serial port settings. RS-232, 115, 200, 8, none, 1. And then also I'm taking out all serial packet identification on the right. You can see where it says STX none, ETX none, PLC, STX, ETX none. It's because in the response there is no byte that's unique for a, a prefix or a suffix. Okay. Well, all we're going to use is time. So we're going to break the packets up or recognize the packets based on at least a 30 millisecond gap between, between the packets. You can see my timer here. I just got to make sure it's bigger. So in this case, my timer in the PLC is 500 milliseconds. So every 500 milliseconds, I send a new command. And um, that's well more than the 30 milliseconds. And uh, I should be good to go. That's all you got to do. All right. When Doing the configuration for Ethernet IP for Device Master, I go to the Port 1 Ethernet IP Settings tab. And then because I'm using a Compact Logix, I find it pretty easy to just use Class 1 messaging. So that's what I've selected here for both RX and TX. PLC IP address doesn't matter because we're going to be connecting from the PLC side. And then 75 bytes. Just want to make sure it's a number that's larger than the 50 bytes that we know is going to come in from from the PLC or from, from the device master. And then I'm also going to check the box TX MS byte first. This is going to reverse the bytes of the uh, distance and the quality such that they come in in the right order for the PLC. So now let's program the PLC. The first thing you want to do is import the EDS file. Just go to our website, put in the model number, Download the EDS file and then just use the EDS hardware installation tool in RS Logix to bring it into the system. Once you do that, add the device master to the Ethernet tree and put in the right IP address. You can see that's 192.168.1.249. So that's pretty easy. And then what you want to do is open up or press the change box in the module configuration. When you do this, you'll see that the input and output size is variable. You might ask, well, what number do I put in there? Go to the web interface and click on the class one interface 
option. It's going to tell you exactly what number to put in. So transfer over, in this case, 327 to the input, and in, in this uh, case, 323 on the output. And again, this is just for my configuration. If you do yours slightly different, just open up the tab, transfer in your numbers. Now, once that connection is made on the Ethernet tree, it's going to take about four rungs of ladder logic to get all the programming in. I want to go through one at a time. In the first rung, what we're trying to do is populate the command in the output data array for the device master. The first step, you want to add the length. So I'm entering a number 5 into that uh, bytes 2 and 3. And then we got the command. So just like before, DE01055983, kind of nice here because you can display it in hex. And you can see that I'm going to enter this 5 byte command starting at array index 4 and going up to 8. So the next rung, or two rungs, is basically the timer, which tells you how often you want to send the command, in this case 500 milliseconds. And then also it's talking about the sequence number. Basically the command gets sent every time the sequence number changes. So what I did was every 500 milliseconds I add 1 to a variable I call counter. And then I take this counter value and I load it into the first two bytes. That's my sequence number. The device master is going to see the change and then send the command out, which in this case is that DE01055983. Right, the last rung is actually a little extra rung that helps me sort out all the distances and echoes of all the beams. So in this case, I just want to take the data associated with the 11 beams and I want to copy it into this UDT that I created. It's basically an array that's 11 indexes long, and then each one of those indexes has got a distance and an echo. So you can see in here, I can just do a, a quick copy, start at the correct data byte, switch it to the beams number 0, length 11, and the data will just automatically get populated. And I just do it all the time. Now I just want to show you a little live demonstration. So you can see my four rungs here. I got my command, my timer fire, firing away at half a millis half a second increments, counting up each time by one. And then each time that does it, I'm also going to take my received data and populate my 11 beams to distance and echo. If I put my hand over it, you can see it's at 90 millimeters. Now I'm going to slowly move my hand away. Now it's going up higher and higher. Now it's at 496 millimeters. And that's it. And you can also see in the Ethernet tree there's no yellow triangle so you know the communication is working properly. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments feel free to contact us. And don't forget to like, share, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay tuned for our next video and have a great day.